Hello, welcome everybody for this analysis session. It is my very great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Gideon Shekman from the Weizmann Institute of Science. He will be speaking about the number of closed ideas in the algebra of bounded operators on the backspaces. So please start. Thank you. Let me share the screen. Um, So, um, okay, so uh, my, I'm going to speak about the number of closed ideals in the algebra of bounded operators on LP spaces. These are the Lebesgue spaces. And uh, the, the part that, is, uh, that I contributed to is contained in two papers, one with Bill Johnson and Jill Pizier, and the other one only with Bill. So let me start with some definitions. So L of X will uh, always denote here the Banach algebra of bounded linear operators on the Banach space X. X is always a Banach space by a closed ideal and always means a two-sided ideal. And so this is a subspace I of L of X, which is invariant under multiplication by any operator from L of X, any bounded operator, both on the right, and on the left, okay? As I said, I'll speak mostly about LP spaces. So just to make sure that we know what we're talking about. For me, LP, so there are two kinds of LP spaces for me. LP, something which I'll denote by capital LP. First of all, the range is including one, but smaller than infinity. L infinity will not be included in most of this talk. Uh, LP is for me LP of zero one. So these are all the real valued measurable functions on uh, the interval zero one, such that the integral of the absolute value of the, the piece power of the absolute value is finite. And this is a norm. And little LP is a set of se real sequences such that the, piece power, the sum of the piece power of the absolute value is finite. Real, I, I'm talking here about real valued function. One can speak about complex valued function. Everything goes through. I wrote real just to fix the idea. Now, one can speak, of course, about LP of a general uh, measure space with a similar definition to the first one. Uh, but it is well known that any infinite dimensional separable LP space is isomorphic either to capital LP or to little LP. And, and these two are not isomorphic one to the other. So isomorphically speaking, these are the only two spaces of interest to us. Also little LP is not much of an interest because the ideals in L of little LP, the only non-trivial ideal is a compact operator. This is well known. So there is not much that I can say about little LP. There is nothing much to say here about little LP. Most of the talk will be about ideals in the, op the bounded operators on, on, on capital LP. There will be a distinction between one, the P equals one and P larger, as we'll see later. Um, so, um, so let me, I, I'll give, before I go into the LP spaces, let me say something about general access. Not much. This is not a complete introduction for that. Also, I'll go very quickly about that because I want to concentrate on the LP part at the end. So what are, which closed ideal do we know in L of X for general X? The first one, the smallest one is, I'm talking about closed ideal, okay? The smallest one is a closure of the finite rank operators. It is easy to see that, that, this, that this is an ideal and that it is contained in any other ideal. Any ideal contain, also any algebraic ideal, even if it's not closed, contain all the finite rank operators. This is an easy exercise. So this is really the smallest one contained in all other ideals. Another one that one can think about is the, the ideal of compact operators, which a lot of times is equal, is the same as the closure of the finite rank operators. In particular on LP, this is the case. 
but not always. There are spaces, exotic spaces in which the closure, in which there are compact operators which are not limit of finite rank operators. Another one, another one is, a, is the ideal of weakly compact operator. So a weakly compact operator is an operator that maps the unit ball to a weakly compact set. Again, it's easy to see that this, are a, that this is an ideal, uh, and, and it's a closed ideal. Um, and a lot of, but a lot of times it coincides with other ideals. In particular, if X is reflexive, then every um, operator is weakly compact. So the weakly compact operator is the same as all of L of X. This is a trivial ideal for us. But, but if X is not reflexive, it's, it, it is different. It may be different from the other ones, may not. Another ideal that will be of interest to us is a, the strictly singular operator. So in, I say that an operator is strictly singular if it is not an isomorphism when restricted to any infinite dimensional closed subspace. Um, so this will play kind of an important role for us, a strictly singular operator. Again, it may coincide with one of the other ideals depending on the space X. On the space X. Another ideal that one, that one can speak about or it's more or less a class of ideals, is a, a maximal ideals. So one has to notice first that an ideal, a non-trivial idea cannot contain an invertible operator. And the set of invertible operators is an open set. So, so any ideal is containing a maximal, maximal um, uh, algebraic ideal. And and then you can take the closure and it still does not, uh, uh, is not everything, okay? So, so there is always a maximal, there is always a maximal ideal. Sometimes there are several maximal ideals. I, I will not speak about this theory in general. There is a lot of uh, research done about that in general, but in LP, the situation is simpler. Uh, it is known that there is a unique maximal ideal and it is equal, it is the same as a set of uh, LP singular operators. That is uh, operators which are not isomorphism when restricted to any subspace isomorphic to capital LP. This is not a trivial, what I'm saying here is not trivial at all. Uh, I will not enter into that, but in capital LP, again, uh, there, there is this non-trivial idea, of, if you want, of all operators which are not isomorphism when restricted to any subspace isomorphic to capital LP. Okay. Now, um, now I want to speak about, now my purpose here is to build a lot of ideals uh, in the space of operators of capital LP. So I want to describe the method by which we build ideals. I, I'm going to describe two methods, which are the only two that I'll use here. Uh, so one of them is the following. You take any operator between any two Banach spaces, and uh, I denote by I u, I sub u, so the operator is u, I denote by I sub u the collection of all operators on X that factor through u. That is, all operators T of this form, B u A, where A is, goes from X, our space of interest, into Y, and B goes from Z into X. Okay, so this is an operator from X to X, which factor for you. Now, this is this clearly satisfies this uh, ideal property of, you know, you can multiply by the right and left by, by an operator on X. However, it's not clear that this is a subspace and it's not always a subspace, but in many cases it is a subspace. One way to ensure this is the following, Let's say that U is an operator such that if you look at U, look at this line here. Um, you look at a U plus U as an operator from Y plus Y into Z plus Z. If this U plus U factor for U, then it's easy to see that this is a subspace. And so you get an, an idea. So this is what, and of course, this is what I described here is a, 
Uh, if you want an algebraic ideal, now take the closure and get a closed ideal. So this is one way that I use to build ideals. And another way is quite similar, kind of more, of more general. So you have now a set of operators on L of X. Again, you can do it with operators between Y and Z, but I did it just when Y and Z are X. This is the only way I'll use it. So you take a set of operators on in L of X, a set of bounded operators in X, and you do something similar to what I did before. You take one of the operators in this class, T alpha I, and multiply it by A and B on right and left. But now you take a lot of such things and you look at finite sums of such things. Okay, overall collection of alpha one up to alpha N from this set of T alpha. So again, and, and I allow repetition. Uh, alpha I may repeat several times. When you do that, it's easy to say again that you get a, a, a algebraic ideal and you take the closure, you get a closed idea. This is another way to generate ideals which I'll use. These are the only two ways that I'll use to generate ideals. Another thing that I want to say about general ideals is a distinction between small and large ideals. This is not so important for what I'm going to, to do here, but it gives rise to some open problems, so I, I, I want to do it. So this is just a definition. I remind you that S of X is a strictly singular operator, the operators on X, the operators which are not isomorphism when restricted to any subspace of X. Now I call an ideal I small if it is contained in the, if all the operators in I are strictly singular and otherwise I call it large. Now the rest of this slide describes some examples of such things, but I will not do it uh, because I want, as I said, I want to get to the main thing at the end. Uh, however, I'll go, I, I'll just, uh, open it so that anybody who wants can look at the recording later and read it. Okay, so these are just examples of a, of a small and large idea. Okay, now we go to the first uh, main result, uh, some introduction to the first main result, ideals in L of L1. So now I, um, I talk about the specific case where X is capital L1. There is a difference between, as you will see, about what we know on capital L1 and what we know on capital L P for P strictly larger. So I start with capital L1. And I remind you that uh, I call an ideal small if it is uh, contained in a strictly singular operator, otherwise it is large. So examples of small ideals, and now I'll go over everything that is known or everything that was known, say, five years ago. So small ideals in L of L1 include the following, the, the compact operator, this, this is always small ideal on any space, the strictly singular operators. Turns out that these two are different ideals. Now is the weakly compact operators, remember we discussed this, but it turns out that in L1, the weakly compact operators are the same as the strictly singular operators. This is, this is a Dunford-Petit property of L1. I will not enter into the definition even. So there are really only two uh, uh, proper idea, uh, small ideas known or were known uh, five years ago, let's say. The compact operators and strictly singular operators. Large ideals include the following. The first one are, I change the notation a bit, are the operators which factor through, remember I had this uh, notation of IU. So here I mean the operator which factors through the identity on little L1. Okay, I wrote it as I little L1, not to write also the identity. Um, and another large idea is, is this maximal ideal that I uh, spoke spoke about, turns out that these are large ideals. For instance, this, the first one includes isomorphism on little L1, so it's not strictly singular. 
Um, so so there, there, are no, there are operators here which are not strictly single. And also here it's even clearer. There is another one which are the Danforth Petit operator which I'll not enter. So altogether there were five known um, um, ideals, proper ideals, I mean, except for zero in the whole space, uh, known until some five years ago. Um, so one remarks about the small and large. In L1, there is something nice that there is some uh, point which distinguish between the small and large ideals. So every large ideal contains the operators which factor, the closure of the operators which factor through little L1. And this ideal, the operators which factor through little L1, con contains any small ideal. So this is just, uh, this is true only in L1. It's not true even in LP. In LP, there is some weaker uh, property. So as I said, this was all that was known uh, until a few years ago. And it led Peach to ask in his book, 79, where if there are infinitely many closed ideals, L of L1. And uh, the, uh, before I, before I uh, go into what we proved, is I, I want to describe the difficulty, but again, I will not go through the whole slide here. Anybody who wants can read it later. I, I just want to, how do you try to do it? So the point is that it's very easy to build different algebraic ideas. The problem is when you take the closure. So for instance, and this is the only example I'll do. For instance, for any P strictly between one and infinity, you can look at the operators on capital L1, which factors for capital LP. Okay, this is a non, this is an ideal, not closed, but an ideal of operator on L1. Um, okay, and they're all different. It's quite easy to see that they're all different. The problem is that once you take the closure, turns out that they all collapse to just one uh, ideal. It's the same as a weakly compact operator. And there are many other, uh, uh, there were many other attempts like that to, to build a, a closed ideal, which didn't really succeed. So there are some description here, which I'll not go through. And what we proved, so this is a theorem with uh, Bill, Gilles, and myself. We proved that there are a continuum of closed ideals in L of L1. Remember before that, there were only five known. Um, and they were turned up to all be small ideals. Okay? Now, moreover, it's not just that they are different, this, that we build a, a continuum of different closed ideals, but they are actually different as Banach algebras. So these ideals, of each two of them are non-isomorphic as Banach algebras, not, not just that they are um, not equal. And one can do some kind of duality here. So the same turns out to be true also in uh, the ideals on L infinity and also uh, in uh, the bounded operators on L infinity, which is, this is no longer a separable space. And also I didn't write it here, but also on the operators on, on C01, on, on the space of continuous function on 01. So the same theorem is true, there are a continuum of um, closed ideals, which are different and even not mutually isomorphic as Banach algebra. Um, um, uh, let me say that there may be, th there is a simple upper bound for the number of closed ideal, and this is two to the continuum. So there may be two to the continuum such closed ideals, different closed ideals, we don't know. So and there are other problems that are left open here, so let me state them here. So first of all, as I say, these are small ideals that we built. We don't know if there are uh, infinitely many, even countably many, uh, closed uh, large ideals, okay? So this is open. This may be the easiest open problem that I state here, but, but it is connected to a very hard problem, which is a problem of whether there are 
complemented subspaces of L1. Complemented subspace is a range of a projection, a range of an identity. Okay, whether there are complemented subspace in L1, which are not isomorphic to either little L1 or capital L. Okay, a any complemented subspace gives rise to a, to a, a, to an ideal, this is true in any space. I, I will not describe exactly how, it's quite easy. These are actually the operators which factor through this projection. And the, the point is that two non-isomorphic complemented subspace give rise to different ideas. So these things are connected. Of course, this is a, maybe a much more famous problem than everything I stated here, if there are other complemented subspaces of L1. It's also open whether there are, as I said, more than a continuum of closed ideals in L of L1. So there are really three open problems here that we can think about. Now I'll say very little about the proof of this theorem. I want to concentrate on the case P larger than one. Uh, but let me just describe kind of vaguely what, what, how, they, uh, how they look like, these ideals. So they are, they are the ideals of the, remember I showed you two ways to build ideals. So they are of the first kind. These are all ideals of operators which factor through some operator. I call it UQ, the closure of such thing. And so there is a collection of, um, of uh, 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 operators, which I'll describe in a minute, uh, for, for any Q between two and infinity. And it turns out that for different Qs, you get different ideals. So this is how you get a continuum of them. Now, what are these UQ? They are quite simple operators. They are the operators which send the basis in little L1, the natural basis in little L1, the coordinate basis, to, um, to a lambda Q set in L1 of the Cantor group, minus one, one to the power N. I'll say in a minute, I'll remind you in a minute what is a, a, a lambda Q set. This is a set of characters on this group. Um, so it's written here, um, a set of characters is, is lambda Q. If the L1 on the, uh, on the linear span of this set of characters is equivalent to the LQ norm of this set of characters. Now it's not, you cannot take any, for this construction to work, you, don't, you cannot take any lambda Q set. You have to take kind of dense lambda Q set, as dense as possible. I will not describe exactly what it means, but the, the existence of such a set was something which was proved by Bourguin. This was a solution to a problem of Rudin. Um, so we can use, it's nice to use this result of Bourguin. Actually, one can use a simpler thing. Need not use, need not need, there is no need to use this thing of Bourguin. One can use something which imitates this, uh, uh, a set of characters. I'll not do it here, but it's nice to refer to them again. Okay, this is all I can say about, this is all I'm going to say about ideals in L of L1. And now I want to go to uh, ideals in LP in the reflexive range. And of course, P is different from two. For P equals two, there is only, this is the same as the as operators on little LP, uh, little L2. And as I said, there is only one non-trivial closed ideal. These are the compact operators. Um, so I'm talking about P different from two, which already shows that there is some problem here in constructing uh, such ideal. So let me say something about what was known before. Here, it was known that there are infinitely many because it was known that there are infinitely many isomorphically different complemented subspaces of LP. You need to remember this U plus U going to something a factor through U. You need something like that. What replaces it here is that you need that you need a complemented subspace X such that X plus X is isomorphic to X. So it was known that there are such uh, infinitely many, countably many such complemented subspaces, which are not isomorphic each to the other. And as I said before, this gives rise to, um, to um, this gives rise to 
uh, ideals, two different ideals, closed ideals. Uh, and they are different, uh, and uh, they are all large because all these all these ideals contain the identity of this complemented substance. So they are not they are non they are non strictly singular operators. Yeah. So this is so, and this was this fact was in my thesis. Okay. Later, so and this is appears also this uh, uh, the fact that from this you get infinitely many ideals this is already in Pitcher's book, because but. But a little bit after Pitch's book, we, we get, together with Borgen and Rosenthal, we uh, strengthened the theorem and actually got Aleph one isomorphically different complemented subsets of LP. So by this, again, each isomorphic to its square. So the, the, by the same reasoning, there are at least Aleph one again large closed ideals in L of LP. So this was known since eighty one. And uh, since then, until some five years ago, nothing more was known. And it left open the problem how many, if there are more than Aleph 1, large or small closed ideal. By the way, it's not known if there are more than Aleph 1 complement, uh, isomorphically different complemented subspaces of LP. Again, I think that this is more interesting than any question I ask here. Many people, including myself, spent a lot of time on that and didn't succeed. Um, there may be a continuum of such, without, without the continuum hypothesis, of course, there may be a continuum of such, such complement subspace. This is not known, but not more than continuum, by the way. But anyhow, it, it left, leave open the, left open the question of whether there are more than Aleph 1, large or small, closed ideal in L of LP. And maybe there are even, as I say, two to the continuum, large or small ideal. These are, this is a kind of a trivial upper bound, not completely trivial, but it's easy to, to get this as an upper bound. Uh, so, so it may, may we may reach this two to the continuum many ideals. So, some so the the first uh, uh, thing in this direction, the first recent thing in this direction, is a theorem of Schlumprecht and Jacques who proved that, um, that there are infinitely many, I'm sorry, that there is a continuum of actually small closed ideals in L of LP. Um, I, I will not, I, I wrote uh, the form of these things, but I will not go through. And the new, the more recent thing is the theorem of Bill and myself, Bill Johnson and myself, there are actually, Two to the continuum closed ideals in L of LP in the reflexive range. And this is it. I mean, there are no more and no, no less. This is exactly the number. And again, there is this moreover thing. These ideals are even non mutually isomorphic as Banach algebras. And we actually proved more. They, we proved that there are two to the continuum large closed ideal and also that there are two to the continuum small closed ideal. The proof which I want to Indicate, of course, I only sketch very briefly the idea, and it relies on five fine properties of spaces spanned by independent random variables in LP for P between two and infinity, which is a topic uh, investigated mostly by Haskell Rosenthal uh, in the seventies. But be before going to the proof of Before going to the proof of that, I want to say something about the, this uh, moreover state. Okay, so, so th this follows from a general principle that we discovered recently uh, with Bill Johnson and Chris Phillips. This is not included in these two papers I, uh, I stated. So what we showed is that any two closed ideal in any space in, any, in the operators on any space that are different are also not isomorphic as Banach algebra. So you automatically get uh, this uh, non-isomorphism as Banach algebra. And one can even strengthen the, this and change isomorphic as Banach algebra, just saying homomorphic as algebra. There is an automatic continuity in such situations. I will not enter. So this will imply the moreover statement. 
And this basically follows from a theorem of Adelaide, or actually from a proof of a theorem of Adelaide. So Adelaide proved that if L of X and L of Y are isomorphic as Banach algebras, and again, it's enough that they are homomorphic algebras, then X and Y are isomorphic as Banach spaces, and moreover, the original isomorphism as Banach algebras is given, is inner, is given by an isomorphism of X onto Y. So it's of the form U A U minus one. Okay, and uh, so digging into the proof of that, we notice that uh, we notice that the same conclusion holds under a, under a weaker assumption. Just that you have a subalgebra of L of X, which contains a finite rank operator, which is isomorphic to a Banach subalgebra of L of Y, which contains a finite rank operator. You don't need all of L of X and all of L of Y. It's enough to have two subalgebras. Only they should be rich enough and should contain the finite rank operators. Okay, now from this it follows immediately, but I will not go into it. This is a proof. From this is it follows immediately the two ideals, uh, which are uh, isomorphic as Banach algebras are equal, actually. It just follows from this thing here. Remember, if, if they are isomorphic as Banach algebra, since they contain the finite rank operators, then the map A goes to U A U minus one, map one of them into the other. But if A is in I, say, then U A U minus one, which is supposed to be in B, is also in A because it's an idea. So it follows that B, that J, so it follows that J is, is, a, is containing I, and similarly I is containing J, so they must be. I, I, probably went too quickly over that, um, but you can read it later in the, uh, in the video. So, back, so now we want to go back to the construction of ideals in L of LP. I have some, I think 13 minutes if I'm not wrong. So I hope to kind of give you the rough idea of how they are built. Okay, so let's begin with this thing of Rosenthal's then indicated before. So this is the following. You take a sequence of positive real numbers, uj, and p is larger than two, and you consider the following very simple space, xpu. So this is a set of sequences, say real sequences. Again, you can do it over the complex. Let's do it over the reals. The norm is given by a maximum of two things. The first one is just a little LP norm. And the second one is basically a little L2 norm, only it's a weighted little L2 norm. I put the weights UJ, or if you want UJ square, depends how you look at it. Okay, so it's a kind of a diagonal of the little LP norm and a weighted little L2 norm, weighted by this sequence UJ. Okay, now what Rosenthal proved, among other things, is that this space for any U, this space is isomorphic to a complemented subspace of LP. Remind you, complemented means range of a contractive projection. Yes, not contract, a range, range of a, a projection, an identity, bounded projection. Uh, and they also proved that the isomorphism constant and the, uh, and the norm of the projection depend only on P, not on the sequence UJ. Now, sometimes you get a trivial space here. For instance, if the UJs are bounded away from zero, then the L2 norm is dominating always, and you get just L2. If the UJs are going very fast to zero, then the little LP part is dominating, and you get just little LP. If you can divide UJ into two subsequences, one which is bounded away from zero and the other 10 to zero very fast, I'll say in a minute, what, what do I mean by very fast? Um, then uh, you get little LP plus little L2, but there are situations in which none of this occur and you get a new space. So this is what I wrote here. So for instance, if UJ goes to zero, but not too fast, not too fast means the following, that the, you look at the UJ, absolute value of G, UJ to the power two P over P minus two, if the sum of this diverges, then you get a new space. Uh, so you get a space which is isomorphically different from the other three kind of classical spaces that I 
indicated it's not little p, little l2, or little l2 plus little l2, not isomorphic to end of. So you get a new, so at the time it was a big achievement, finding kind of a new complemented sub, isomorphically complemented subspace of LP. I just remind you of the norm here. And one can think that probably for different use, kind of uncomparable sequences use, you get two different spaces and you get many complemented subspace cells, but maybe unfortunately for at least for Rosenthal, he proved that uh, for different use satisfy the condition above, uh, I mean, you know, that give you a new space. All these spaces are isomorphic one to the other. So you get only one new space isomorphic. And we denote this new space by just XP. Sometimes I'll write XPU when I want to emphasize the exact form of the space that I'm talking about. Sometimes if I'm only talking about the isomorphic class, I'll say XP. Now we need, we need, uh, um, we need more properties of uh, the spaces. Uh, but right now I only want this representation above. And, uh, and I also, so I want to fix a basis, which is just a unit vector basis of, um, of this space. So I want to be a little bit more precise. Um, so EJ will denote the unit vector basis of little p and FJ is the unit vector basis of little l2. And I take two sequence, I, I'm going to speak about two such spaces, which again, they are isomorphic. But, so I take two sequences, VJ and WJ, with a ratio be, which are not comparable in the sense that the ratio between them tends to zero. I call the ratio delta J. And uh, there is a natural basis for each of them. One of them is just EJ plus VJ. I, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about this as sitting in little LP plus little L2. The sum is in the L infinity norm. This, this is the meaning of this max. So the first one, the first one is a basis EJ plus VJ FJ. The second one is a basis EJ plus WJ FJ. It denotes these spaces by GJ upper V and GJ upper W. And these are the, so these are the unit basis, vector basis of XPV and GJ W is a unit vector basis XP. I just repeated the definition here. And I want to, dis to discuss, I want very important for me will be a certain operator going from XP with weight W to XP with weight V, which remember these two spaces are isomorphic one to the other. And it's just a kind of a very simple diagonal operator. I multiply by Delta J. And again, I'll jump over it. So one, I want to, I need to show that this operator is bounded. It's very easy really to show that it's bounded. It's bounded, the bound is the maximum of the Delta J's, uh, which I assume it's one. Okay, I assume that the maximum of the Delta J is one. So this is written here why it is bounded, but I'll jump over. I'll, uh, okay, now I want to go, I actually will work with the dual spaces. So I'm talking about XP star, which remember it is now isomorphic to a complemented subspace of LQ, where Q is P over P minus one. This is a number between strictly larger than one, strictly smaller than two. P was strictly between two and infinity. Okay, and Rosenthal proved, this is not completely trivial, that XP star is actually, it's, it seems like a meager space, but it's actually quite a large space. In particular, it contains isomorphic copies of little r, for any R between Q and two. Now we needed to strengthen this thing. And this is a major, the major technical part in our proof. We actually proved that Delta star, the adjoint operator to Delta that I, that I, that I stated before, that I defined before, um, preserved non-trivial copy of LRN. So what do I mean by that? I mean that there are, there, take, there is a sequence Ri going to two and Ni such that this quantity goes to infinity. This, mean, this means that, uh, um, that uh, the, this space is far away from a Euclidean space. 
the distance is going to infinity. This is what this thing means. And there are sequences Vs and W with delta J going to zero, such that, and this is the important thing, this star isomorphically uniformly preserves copies of LRI and I. Okay, so I, I think it should explain itself. What do I mean by isomorphic? The isomorphism constant is uniform in RI and NI, so uniform in I. Um, now, how do we build the new idea? I have five minutes, let's see. So, um, so we need to build new ideals in, I, I'll build the ideals in the operators on XP star. As I said, this is a complemented, isomorphic to a complemented subspace of LQ. So it's very easy from there to get ideals in L of LQ and by duality in L of LQ. So they will all be of this, let's start with, um, it will be more general than that, but let's start with, with that. So the ideals will be the operators which factor through this, this star WV. And uh, we built, what we built first is a continuum of different sequences W, uh, uh, pairs of, the, of sequences WV, such that these things are all different. And this already produced a continuum of different ideas. But we want more, remember we want two to the continuum. So if you look, if you take a subset of this continuum and you look at the, all the operators indexed by this subset, then we show not we show that if you take two such subsets, different subsets, then the two ideal generated by them. Remember, this is the second form of so of of of, of building ideals are, are actually different. And that this way you get two to the continuum. So this produces a two to the continuum. How do we do it exactly in three minutes? You take one operator like that, T. And you notice that it has the following properties. First of all, there is a banner space in our case, it's just XPV star with one unconditional basis. This means that the norm of a linear combination depends only on the absolute value of the coefficients, T. So this is our T and you know what X is. And it has two properties. One is that for every M, there are spaces of, um, of, a, of, of the, there are spaces which are far away from a Hilbert, from an Euclidean space on which T acts as an isomorphism. These are this LRI and I. This is one property which I already indicated. The other property looks like it's a kind of the opposite to that. If you fix M, if you fix the dimension, then if, and you take a space which sits on the basis past the end place, then the operator T restricted to E factors through a Hilbert space. So for instance, it cannot contain LRI, NI as before. It looks like a contradictory, but they are not contradictory. So this operator has these two properties. One is to prove this. And our main proposition is, I'm not sure if I'd like to, if I managed to go through all of that, but operator with this property have a certain Operator with this property, this is a corollary, uh, uh, forces L of X to contain two to the continuum different closed ideas. The ideas are of the form, you, you look at the basis, you form some blocks of the basis, disjoint blocks of the basis. You take a continuum of subsequences, each two for which is a finite intersection and it turns out that if you take some finite number of them, of such sequences, and you look at such an expression, I, I'm sorry, I didn't say what T alpha is. T alpha is just, you look at the projection on this subsequence and followed by T. Now, if you look at such an expression and you take an alpha, which is not one of these alpha i, is not in the, subse in the subset, um, then T alpha is far from anything like that. So if, it means that if you take two disjoint subsets of this C, you get, and you look at the ideal generated by these subsets, you get two different ideas. This is really what follows. And I think I must finish here. So 
I have some more to say, but I leave it to anybody who wants to read it later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ileon, for the beautiful talk. Fortunately, we have no time for questions, but let me grab. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you. <laughs>